What's going on, guys? Thank you for coming in. Lots of people already here. And I know we're going to be getting a Yanai raid. Oh, here they come. Awesome, awesome. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. If there's not one problem, there's another when you're on the road full time, whether it's a engine problem, a heating up problem, or those poor guys. So anyway, I'm going to welcome some people in. I'm going to try and uh, hit a group of you guys. I know I'm going to miss some people, so please forgive me. Um, Kelly and I went on a float trip today, so I almost canceled the live stream, but it's a hot topic. <laughs> and so I thought, let's do this because I don't know about you guys, but it is so hot here in Missouri and it is um, everything I can do to be out there working. So we're going to talk about cooling things down a little bit. Um, Elizabeth, thank you for always putting in that link over at Travis and Unai's for the raid. I appreciate that. Kaylee in the house, and I get it. There are people out there with health issues, and you just cannot make it in the heat living in a van. So there has to be an answer. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Patty A, welcome in. Thanks for coming in. Um, time for exploring. Thanks for being here, Tim. Lillian, Judith coming in from hot California. Um, I know it's hot over there. RV grandma, it's going to be 103 here this week. So I'm going to be inside probably a lot. Patty Coretta getting ready to hit the road and head kind of this direction and it's going to be a hot one so no, countdown to nomadic life the beach house adventure begins this friday as a builder and having built that van i'm so excited for you and so proud you know to be a part of your journey by super exciting but i know i'm going to hear about the heat because it is it is miserable out there van vita travels thank you for coming in um, Michelle, Annette and Britain, Annette and Britain, if you guys haven't checked out their channel, they're the ones, um, that taught me the Play-Doh trick and happy place camping or fishing buddy. One of these days we're going to get to fish together. Mary Jones, welcome in. Hope you're feeling well. Box Van D, if I don't hurry up, I'm going to get in trouble. Van City Adventures, if you guys don't follow this guy, on Instagram or TikTok, please check him out because his editing, his his rig, his editing is really, really good. So check him out. Um, him and that little guy, they got all kinds of, and little pug, they, all, they got all kinds of good content. Um, Floss, welcome in. I'll be seeing you um, up north. Hey, y'all. I better, I better quit saying hi to everybody or Kelly's going to get mad at me. I cannot skip Mark Wolf. How are you doing, sweetie? Gracie Seeking Adventures. Um, Tracy Jones, hello. Welcome in. Beth Gray, first live chat ever. Beth, thank you for coming in. Beth is a client from Ohio, and their van is in route. So super exciting to be able to help her um, with the dream come to Brianne from Tampa, Florida, where we know it's hot. V, thank you for coming in. Appreciate you. I know it's later. Lesson Bernadette. I'm going to get in trouble. Sunset Jen, Deborah, all these guys, you guys are, are constant supporters. Thank you for coming in. All right, guys, I'm going to get in trouble. Let's start. What is going on? I am um I am keeping on, keeping on. It has been a hot one. We're going to talk about cooling things down. What I've done with my van this entire time I've had it is nothing. I put window shades up over the front. Not only do I put the um they're called weather tech shades up but i also put um a curtain up and i try to keep as much heat as i can up in that front cab so i've got a smaller area to try and keep cool and um 
Yeah, so it's so it, every little bit helps. Now in the back, I've got two windows. Those I open those up. I turn my vent fan on. I like, matter of fact, I did it yesterday. I take my fan apart all the time and clean it. I want to make sure that that thing is working perfectly smooth. Um, it's the only thing that I've got in there. So a friend of mine, when I was up in West Virginia, it was 105. So she got me this little thing and I'm going to show you because I've had it on my desk and it's a little kind of like Arctic ice type thing. I'm sure you guys have seen these. So on my very last end, tail end, of my nursing travel assignment, uh, my best friend bought me this. And I'm going to show you. It's got a little cooler, a little um, filter. And I'm going to show you this. And you just pull that out, wet that down. And basically, you're just blowing moist, moist air on you. Which, obviously, in van life, it's condensation. That's not the best answer. But I was miserable. It was 105. I was trying to acclimate myself to the temperatures. I did good for a long time. But when she picked that up for me, I welcomed it and I did use it. And blowing on me, blowing on me, very nice. I actually put that filter in the refrigerator so that it would be as cold as I possibly could get it. So then um, everybody saying hi to Tawana. Thanks for coming in. Um, so, uh, so that's what I used. So it is definitely not for everybody. And one of the biggest questions that I get as a van builder, and I'm getting them more and more and more, and I'm getting emails about it is what's, what air, what air conditioner should I get? Um, I bought a cooling blanket for the trip. That'll be an interesting review. I would love to, to hear all about that. Um, yeah, me without AC. Absolutely. So there's a lot of people out there that feel that way, that they couldn't do van life if they didn't have an AC. Now, I'm here to tell you there's a whole lot of people in van life that have ACs and don't use them. So the number one question that I've been getting, and, and it's been since I've been building from people online, people through email, people in the chat, is how much power do I need? How much power am I going to need in my van? And that is a question that as a builder, until you tell me every single thing that you're putting in your van that draws power and every single time you plan on using that, I'm going to use my cooktop oven for 10 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night for dinner. I'm going to use a fan all day long. You know, until I know all that, I can't answer that question for you. We can ballpark a number and hope that that works and you can add to it after you're living in it, if it's not enough, you can have a backup system, um, things like that. Number nine. I don't know what that's about. So, um, so that question dramatically changes. The answer dramatically changes when you tell me that you want some kind of air conditioner. Whether you want, I think they're as low. I've been researching them for you guys as much. I did a bunch of research this week. Whether you want one that's 2,300 BTUs, one that's 4,000 BTUs, one that's 6,300 BTUs. I was whether, wondering whether two vent fans would be better than one for cooling. I feel like it's going to circulate more air. I do feel that way. Anytime that you can have one pulling in, one pulling out, circulating that air. It's got to be better. Patty has got two vent fans. We're going to be doing a lot of talking to her in the next, um, in this coming month. So we're going to get those answers because with me having one vent fan, I can tell you this, a vent fan and no windows is not an answer. 
Like that's your, you're at a dead end because that fan has nowhere to pull air to. It has to be able to circulate the air. So a vent fan, if you turn it on and listen to it and then roll down a window, that's when you're truly going to understand how much a window affects your fan. It's, it's efficiency. Can you do it on a rainy day? You can. Is it going to be efficient as what you need? No. Two fans, obviously, are going to be phenomenal because you can run them at all the time and not really worry about the fan if you've got the deluxe. So um, so with that being said, I kind of lost I, I lost kind of lost track of where I was at. But um, so it dramatically changes when you tell me that you want to use an AC unit. And because there's so many out there right now, if you want, if you know for a fact that you cannot live without an air conditioner, hello, Christine, thank you for coming in. If you know you cannot live without an AC unit, then you have to tell, I'm trying to get this off the screen. You have to, you have to consider these things. Whatever type of van you have on top of the roof, you only have so much real estate. We like to call it real estate. You've got a you've got imagine a grid that's maybe 68 by, you know, maybe 12 foot. If you put, let's just say you put a Dometic up there, it's 25 inches by 34. That's bigger than some solar panels. So um, let me read this real quick. Um, the two, I'm going to read these two things. The two vent fans have been great. Most days the van is pretty comfortable. Too hot um, of a day. Too hot of a day. Well, air conditioning is probably needed if I was willing to plug in for it. That's exactly right. And we're going to get to that. On a cargo trailer, I have um, side vents with top vents. To circulate works awesome. I've got two fans in the ceiling, class C, one at each end. I do a push pull. That's smart. That's what we all do. Um, and uh, to the other. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Now, one more comment down here. He got a swamp cooler inside my van. It's terrible, adding way too much humidity outside. It's awesome. It actually feels like a real AC and uses less than 100 watts. Are you saying it works good outside? I'm sorry. I'm confused on that one. The new 12 volt AC unit are different and have a much lower profile. So I've been looking at the Dometic and it's like, it's said it's 12 inches tall. It's 25 by 34. So when you go with a AC unit that you can have them where they're portable, like the EcoFlow Wave, the Zero Breeze, or you can get them where they actually mount to the top of your RV, like the Dometic, like um, a Nomadic. You, and you can get a split air that most people either mount them on the back of door, one of the back doors, or I did see a video where he mounted it on the side of his van. Takes up a lot of real estate. A lot of these units, depending on... Um, how much that compressor is going, how much you're running it, it uses a tremendous amount of power. So now you've got this big AC unit on top of your van or your trailer or whatever. You're probably going to lose space for a solar panel that could have went up there that you're actually going to need. So you have to have a backup power. And some of these units have backup power with them. You can buy extra batteries. They are extremely costly. The Zero Breeze battery is $500. The EcoFlow battery was, it was $900. So um, I have an older model Coleman, absolutely, on the roof, only works with shore power or a generator. And that's what I'm saying. If you want an AC unit on top of your rig, you're going to lose some of your solar capacity. 
So even if you did go up to 600 amp hours worth of batteries, which I would recommend if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy a Dometic, a Coleman or Nomadic, um, any of these rooftop, a split air, these are using a lot of power. You're now have less solar on top of your roof. So you, ha you have to increase the battery capacity. You've got to get a DC to DC charger so that those are charging while you're driving or a generator so that you can use your units while you're driving. Because otherwise, what you're doing is if you put that unit up there and you, you have to be very conscious, especially if you're running it at night, about your power capacity. Basically, you're going to run that AC unit just to drop that temperature a couple of degrees, less than 10. So if you spend 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 on a unit to go on top of your van, and it's taking a tremendous amount of your power, again, there are people that cannot live without it. So I am definitely not, I'm definitely not discouraging people that absolutely have to have it from getting this. But this is what I want you to know. You have to have a plan B for running it because at the most time that you really want it, which is probably while you're sleeping, you're not charging. So you have to be on shore power. You have to be on a generator or you have to have that big 600 amp hour capacity that you're able to charge in the morning However, because because I'll tell you, Hobo Tech did a, a pretty thorough video on the EcoFlow Wave. He had a separate battery. The separate battery, I said, is $900. You can only charge it at 200 watts an hour. It only lasts for three hours. So he said, you know, there's no way you're going to keep up with that. You have to get something that's a bigger amp hour. Um, an AC such as Boxman D, uh, that would be good. But how much would you use it? Well, you know she uses hers frequently, but she's on shore power now. And when she wasn't on shore power, she had a generator. She had a propane generator that she could run that off of. So here you've got somebody that lives in the terrible heat, has to have an AC. I mean, you just have to. So she had plan B. That's all I'm saying. If you're physically, medically, you need that. Just have a plan B. Have a way that if you do have a 600 amp, amp hour battery, I keep saying 600 because that's what I would suggest. If you're going to have anything like 6,000 amp hour, 6,000 BTU ish, you know, unit. Let me, let me, let me read a couple of these comments real quick. Cause I, 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 your comments are important. I can't run my AC on my box van, even with a thousand Watts of solar and 250 usable amps on my batteries, but just for a few hours. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. Um, where is everyone from everywhere? Everybody put in what state you're from. Um, with solar, a blue 80 AC will run air conditioning with a soft start at least during the day on a sunny day it will but how are how are you go and 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 a soft start because that's going to keep it charged so again you have to be cautious at night because i think a lot of people want to run it at night when they're sleeping so that um you know they can sleep comfortably so okay i'm going to read some of these states this is awesome um get so many people from all over in here um uh new jersey texas california california alabama florida kentucky ohio washington missouri joliet pennsylvania um alabama connecticut hi johnny how you doing hey lance thanks for coming in oklahoma Hi, Flush. Hello at Van Life Voyages, California, Washington State, Kentucky. Maybe if you are in a lower heat, a little damp, uh, what, absolutely. And that's another thing. When you've got a unit like this that puts off a lot of condensation, you know, if you're in a dry climate, this may help you 
feel better. I live in a high humidity, a very high humidity place. So it doesn't for me. Um, Southern California, but planning to travel, New York, um, Australia. I love my Australia friends. Um, Maine, I know that I tell me what the temperature is in Maine right now. And honestly, tell me what the temperature is, Jen, in Australia. And is it high humidity down there? 15 minutes from Johnny. That sounds like a coffee date. Maryland, Sue, how are you? Thank you for coming in. I always love seeing you in here. Um, in Texas at the moment, I just bought an EcoFlow Delta Pro. It will run my 11,000 BTU for nine hours. Now, when we talk about things like this, I want to have for people that are in here, not like Lance, he knows what he's doing. But when people are in here and you don't know how the ACs work, how the compressors work, I want you to use caution with these statements because yes the ecoflow delta is amazing just like the blue eddy ac3 um hundred just like um your lithium setup that's got 600 amp hours when you say 11 uh, nine hours eleven thousand btu you have to remember is it on boost mode is it on 72 is it set to 65 because you can get in your rig, boost that AC, it's going to drop your battery capacity horribly so that you can drop that temperature 10 degrees. Once you drop that temperature down, you might have used 9% of your battery, 15% of your battery, but now you're going to go to like an eco mode, okay? So that you're basically just keeping it comfortable enough in there that you can sleep. Or that you can be comfortable. Maybe you don't feel good. Maybe you feel like you've got some heat exhaustion and you just need to cool it down in there. So nine hours de really depends on how hard that compressor is cycling. Because when that compressor is, is ticking, that hours are going to drop. So just be careful with that. Um, I tested it myself in the RV, actual nine hours, three minutes, set it 68 degrees. There you go. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I know, Lance, I know you, you're a hundred percent know what you're talking about. Some people want, you know, they, I don't like being cold. I would probably keep it at 78. Ab absolutely. Because when it's a hundred degrees outside, if you can set it at 78, I promise you when you're sitting in a rig and that AC is blowing on you, if it's 100 outside, you could have that set at 80, and it would still feel cool to you. So a um, couple hours of, uh, during lunch break, absolutely. And that's what I think a lot of people do, um, um, is, is they use it in spurts, a couple of hours at a time. When you decide whatever unit you're going to go with, whatever battery capacity you have, whatever solar you have, you just have, just like anything in van life, you have to learn exactly how your system works. You have to judge the, the biggest thing when you're deciding is how many BTUs you're getting, how much does it cost, how efficient is it going to be? So, um, you know, so that makes a, th those are all big questions because you may not need a 6,000 BTU air conditioner. You may just want something to drop the temperature eight to 10, you know, 12 degrees so that you can cool down a little bit. Victoria, uh, 51.8 degrees, sun's out, no wind, but chilly. It's winter. Summer gets humid, but not often for me by the coast. So cool. So cool. And did she answer how, how what the temperature is in Maine? I only need it cool enough to be able to breathe. 78 is good. 76 when it's extremely humid. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing is, is when you're, you know, these units, whatever kind you're getting is, you know, you open up that door and a tremendous amount of 
air exchange takes place. So you're trying to cool it off in there. Make sure that when you come in, you're going to stay in for a while because as soon as you open a van in, in van, in van life, that sliding door, you just, you just drop that temperature, you know, right back down to, you know, five, 10 degrees, having a light color. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only that, but like I do, I put reflectix in the the front um, above the driver and passenger, you've got a lot of heat that comes through there. So that insulation, that reflectix, whatever you're using up there, all those things make a huge difference when you're in a van and you're trying to stay cool. Get those windows all covered if you've got an AC on. Shut off that entire front of the van if you've got an AC on. Cool down as as just a smaller space as you can, and, and it's and your unit's going to be a lot more efficient. But again, it's warm in here. Um, this is a room without a cold air return. When this house was built, there was no air return. I can't get it cool in here in the summer. It's probably my forehead. Let me, let's do my let's do my mighty temperature here, which you're not supposed to do. 94.8 is my surface temperature. 94.8. Let me turn my little unit on here. We'll see. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point this at it. 70, 74.5, 72, 71, 71. And that's 94. I'll take it. I'll shut that off so you guys don't have to listen to it. The other thing, I'll tell you what, if you can't sleep, because when I was doing all this research, a lot of the things are cost, how much they weigh, how many watts they put out, how many, how many, what's the BTUs, how many watts, some of them are 12 volts, some of them are 24. So then you've got to get a 12 volt to 24 volt um, exchanger. Um, so then, so all these things matter when you're looking. So I will say the 12 volt, if you could get the 12 volt one, it seems like they have a better efficiency. So like the Dometic, um, the Nomadic, you're talking about $4,000 units, three, $4,000 units, but they use um, less um, amperage, less watts over an extended period of time. So you can use those longer. Um, again, if you're going to go with a unit like that, the Coleman, Nomadic, Domatic, um, Split Air, I would definitely get yourself. If you're going generator, then I would get um, something that it's expandable like the um, Delta, you can, you can buy extra batteries, the blue Eddy, you can buy extra batteries, or if you have the big lithium setup, then just make sure that you've got the amp hours to, to handle it for eight hours. If you need to overnight, how about just going to elevation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause they're up in, you know, they, they go to Minnesota, go to, go to Canada. Absolutely. Definitely chasing 70 degrees is the number one perfect solution for staying cool, especially if you medically, how many people do you know of that go to Arizona in the winter? My dad had MS. He went to the UP every summer. Every summer I took him to the UP because he couldn't stand the Midwest temperatures. Um, you can get a soft start, um, absolutely, so that you don't get the initial surge, absolutely. Some units, some units will have, um, and I think the split air is one of them. When I was researching that, when that compressor kicks on, it is a really gradual, which helps not pull so much. You look hot, your face is flushed. I was on a canoe trip today a float trip on a raft and I got sunburnt and I'm hot, but I was sunburnt. So it was really, yeah. Okay. This is what I want to talk about.
the portable unit breeze, um, like 1600s, take up a, a large area of the inside. Uh huh. I felt it uh, wasn't worth it. I'll be in Connecticut for the summers. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, after researching all these units, I do have to say some of these portable ones that you really just vent out the window and a lot of people to avoid venting it out, they actually just kind of had it sitting on like say a vanity or a sink base, blowing the cold air on them because they really just wanted to cool down. So they've got that unit. They don't have any drains plugged in. They don't have any air ducts going through a wall. They've got it in their garage. And then when they want to use it and just have cold air blowing on them, maybe they just got done mountain biking or hiking. They plug that in, just like Mark said, his works fantastic outside. They just have that cold air blowing on them. So, and those are like, I, like she said, they're a thousand dollars. They're $14.99 if you buy it with the battery. The battery lasts about three to five hours. Um, the battery on the unit, the Zero Breeze, gives it a total weight of 30 pounds. So, yeah, but they are 24 volt. So you have to you have to do the um the 12 volt to 24 volt converter. Um, so sorry to hear that, Johnny, about your dad. It's tough. A good friend of mine has it, and she's not it. It's it's MS is M MS is terrible. Um, damp rid for hum damp rid for hum humidity. Absolutely. I use those in my van when I was in West Virginia. I feel like those really help removing a lot of the moisture out of the air when you're in those humid areas. I I definitely do those. 104. Oh my gosh. Australia's winter right now. That's what she said. Yep. Isn't that that'd be awesome. I need to come down there. Um, uh, let's see here from, I never realized you're from Alabama. My van in September. <laughs> yes, I am. I tested it. My, oh, gotcha. Oh, I must've somehow got way. My thing must've scrolled. I'm going to scroll up. Hopefully I did not miss a chart. Oh no, no, no worries at all. Um, no worries at all. Um, I'm thinking if I need one, I'll probably just get the zero breeze. You could put it in the front seat and blow it out the window. Not only can you blow it out the window, but they it comes in the with the fan, the the plastic guard that goes in the window, roll your window up, and then it holds it in place for that fan. Again, again, um, I'm not raving about this thing. But if you're the type of person like me, when I'm in my office, there's no air return. This little unit sitting next to me, this little unit, just a little cool air blowing on you can make or break your day. Because I can sit in a spot for a couple of hours or a couple of minutes, get cooled down, and then go about my day. When I'm out working and it's been humid hot out here, you know, I'll run inside, I'll cool down a little bit, get a drink of water, Go back outside and start it all over again. I use bag moisture absorbers. That's what that's what RIT is. That's what that damp RIT is. Um, South Equator has winter when we have summer and summer when we have winter. I should have paid more attention in geography. Newman Outdoors, thank you for coming in. Appreciate you being here. Um, or should I see if AC needs coolant? Oh, something that's something different. Turn, turn your fan on. Oh, you can't hear it. Let me tell me, tell me if you hear this. I'll put it on low. You guys tell me if you hear it. It's pretty neat. I like it. Um, I actually bought a second one because Kelly and I are getting ready to go to a meetup next week and it's supposed to be 103 degrees and and it'll probably be miserable so even though when it's going to increase the humidity in the van just having this cold air blowing on me just for a couple of minutes every now and then i can put the little filters in the freezer that really makes it blow cold air love it love it can't hear it can't hear it 
I love that. I love that. Because this thing makes a huge difference to me. But it's only, you know, in the in the room here, it's probably like 82 or something. So it's not like may, maybe even 78. Um, we keep our house about 68 here, but but this room just is warm. It's cold in the winter, warm in the in the summer. Um, let's see what else I missed. So, um, the other thing, um, you know, if you decide that you want to go with an EcoFlow, um, wave, you want to go, you know, remember portable solar panels so that you can, you can park in the shade, which is going to keep your unit cooler, get portable solar panels, Put your solar panels out in the sun. I've got 35 foot cables so that I can park in the shade, put my solar, even though I've got solar on my roof, disconnect those, get your portable panels out there, let your portable panels work so that so that your van in the shade is going to keep it cooler. If you do have a fan on, it's going to be pulling in a little bit cooler of air because you're not in the direct sun. Or if you've got an AC unit, you can run it at a lower uh, uh, rate as well. Can you put a link for uh, the one you have and how much it costs? Um, let me do that. When we're done on the community tab, let me put that on the community. Well, hey, Kelly, can you drop that? Can you drop that link? I'll put it on the community tab because it'll take me. It'll take me forever. I'm not quick at, at some of that stuff. I found two branches. Um, I'm going to work. I don't know if I. I missed that. I must have missed that. There are always a little hum on my videos because I have a little. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I have asthma and COPD from asbestos. That's terrible. Contractor for 20 years. Dry air, desert, no more than 6,000 elevation or I can't breathe. So many people that in this community have had some issues with um, elevation, that elevation um, do reflective shade covers on the window help cool the van or eight run AC is going or even I I am a fan of reflectix in the windows. I think it reflects that heat and keeps your rig cooler. Summer, winter, I put I put them up. I the more light that's coming through, the more it's gonna warm up in there. And you want to do a test. Put a thermometer in your in, uh, on your visor, your window visor. Put a thermometer in the back. I've got one of those things that you can have four sensors. I keep one in my refrigerator so I know what my refrigerator temperature is. I keep one up front above the driver seat. I keep one in the back and I keep one outside. The temperature up front, I promise you, is going to be at least 20 degrees different than the back once you cover those windows and put your curtain up 20 degrees i promise you um i got i got a couple questions here i'm gonna get um when it's too hot i just idle my van absolutely it lowers the humidity and temperature unfortunately i have to do it several times throughout the day or night absolutely Run that van a little bit. The other thing is if you watch Lady Bug Out, she's got what's called a noggle. So if you are, if you've got Reflectix up, you've got your curtain up because you don't want to cool that space down. Get those noggles, close all your vents but one, connect that noggle, bring it through the curtain, and then run your unit for a little bit. And if you have it closed up, I did that when I was in West Virginia. On those 105 days when I did not have air, the hospital was 18 minutes away. I would turn the air as cold as I could stand it and get it as cold as I could in there. And before I left the hospital, I would get all my stuff, my electrical stuff, all exactly the way I needed it. I would drive home with that AC cranking. When I got back 
to where I was staying at, I wouldn't open a door at all. And I would go to bed. I wouldn't wake up until noon or one o'clock to turn my vent fan on because it stayed a cooler temperature. I parked in the shade. I had it cooled off. I had all my reflectix up in the window. I had my curtain up and it stayed cool. It stayed cooler in there. So at least 15 degrees. Um, Damper it is awesome. Absolutely. Um, great idea on the portable panels. It absolutely is. And you have them. So if you have them, you're going to get more solar with portable panels than just sitting in one place. When you're driving, your panels pull a lot of power, a lot of solar because of the way the sun hits them. When you're parked somewhere, there, sometimes you'll get like a shadow. Sometimes the um, your roof rack will shadow one. And depending on what kind of solar panels you have, you'll notice. Mark my word. If you know your system and you watch your system, you'll charge so much faster when you're driving than when you're stationary. Um, and, and I'll argue that with anybody. If someone says, no, it doesn't matter, I'll argue it with anybody. Um, I'll be running. Absolutely. Absolutely. The last thing you want to do, you're going out on an, on a van life adventure. The last thing you want to be is miserable. So idling your van for a little bit to get yourself cooled down, let it blow on you, get it cooled down in there, put your window coverings up and it'll stay cool for a while. Um, we have a rear AC, so when we run our engine, it gets cool fast inside. Absolutely. Patty has that same thing. If you get a van that has the RV package, it's got the vents in the back. So, so if you have someone else build out your van, do not let them cover those vents in. Um, also planning on getting a cooling blanket to use. Absolutely. We were talking about that earlier. Patty's going to tell me all about, I feel like damp claws, you know, get a bandana, keep it in the freezer, get a couple of them, keep it in the freezer. Those little fans that go around your neck and it's got two fans that point towards you. Get one of those. Those are USB. This little thing right here, this little thing right here, it runs I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly what it's running because I've been testing it. One watt. I got my Jackery. This little thing that's blowing cold air at me. One watt. Now, I'm going to turn it on high. Now, again, again, it's a moisture heat. It's going to go up to about eight watts, and that's it. So, four. It's just at four right now. Three. Three. Maybe it's not going to go up, but they're rated from one watt to nine watts. But um, so, I mean, and they take up very little space. So if you can handle a little bit of humidity um, in your van, a little bit of moisture in your van, you know, let it run on you a little bit just to cool you down. Um, also planning on getting the cooling blink. Oh, I think I already read that. Some rigs have... Um, the big solar setups that turn and tilt, some automatically adjust to the sun's position. Absolutely. What you have to remember, Deborah, when you're looking at something like that, okay, no matter what van you get, I mean, 21 feet is about what you're getting. Once you put a AC unit up there, you want a vent fan. If Even if you have an AC unit, you want a vent fan too. So now you've taken it down to about enough space up there for two panels. Tilting them is amazing. If you get one of those brackets up there that you can direct it to where you need it to face the sun, just be aware those brackets are heavy. They are very heavy. They're hydraulic and they are heavy. So the AC unit, like the Dometic, is 70 pounds. Now you put a bracket up there that I'm telling you, with that and the little motor that it has to have, has got to be 100 pounds. You've added a lot of weight on your van. I would just tilt them. And you park, you park in the direction that you need to park in to get that tilt perfect. 
And, and there's a lot of people, when you go to Quartzsite, you see a lot of people that tilt their solar panels. A wonderful idea. The same thing as a portable panel, the same thing, except you got to park in the sun. So if you can park in the shade, park in the shade and get your solar panels out in the sun, that's going to be the most effective. Um, uh, that would be enough for me. Um, um, sorry, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing any, I can just imagine chasing the, I can just, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would too chase that shade. Um, my next van will have AC. Right. And again, yeah, just have a backup. I don't know how many people that I saw out at Quartzsite that had those little Honda generators. So if you if you need that that AC, just have a plan B. Get get a big battery system. It's just costly. It's very expensive. Um, but if you feel like you're going to be in warmer clients climates more then then definitely definitely and especially again if it's a health related necessity absolutely but just make sure that you know your unit your watt hours test them out because i'm telling you what the company says they're rated at and what actual reviews reveal it's not the same when people say when companies say, oh, it, it's 240 watts, that's on low. I promise you that's on low. Turn that up to boost, to boost mode and it's 575 or it's, you know, 470. Now, you can also get like um, DC like enhancers. Can't, uh, I got to remember what they're called. Boosters type and it can boost your system. You can get more watts out of you know what you're using so so if you're going to go with a unit you know make sure that you're researching that and get the most that you can out of your system so that is it i would definitely if you're if you're going to go with a ac unit i would definitely get the most battery capacity that your budget can can handle that your van or schoolie or ambulance can hold space wise, get as much solar on top that you have real estate for and, and be happy with your decision because, because ultimately you're going to have to have those three things together to make it work. My kill man came yesterday. Awesome. Roll that out. Make sure you roll that out as smooth as you can get it. Um, I got a cooling blanket. Great for a little bit. Then you have to get air under it again to feel the cooling effect. Awesome. Awesome. Just, fl just fluff it. Get some air under there. Oh, bye, Christine. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Um, what about cruising comfort, 12 volt for power usage, weight price, etc.? I will check that out, Jen. And I will do, we'll talk about. We will talk about that unit um, next week. I'm surprised I didn't see that because I was like, I was Googling like the, you know, the top AC units for van life. Um, I was trying to do different ones, portable, split air, and then the roof mount. I tried to do all three of those and kept coming across which ones were the most popular. So, um, Good, yeah, good to know. Absolutely. Was looking at them on Amazon, wondered if they worked as well. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, when Patty talks to me about it, you know, we'll talk about it because I'm I am all about if these companies are advertising something that absolutely doesn't work or doesn't work the way they say it's gonna work, or you have to do something different to keep it cool or whatever. I'm all about like letting everybody know about it. Cause I don't care. Um, uh, hope you're happy. I am doing good. We are doing good. I hope you guys are doing good as well. Um, 
I'd like to know too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look that one up. I'll look that one up. Guys, it's 950. If you're a moderator, would you drop your link? I appreciate all my moderators. I'm going to do a shout out to my Patreons and my channel members. I will, I will say that the van that I've been working on has been picked up. My, my Patreons have already seen the tour video. I've got amazing feedback from those guys. I appreciate everybody that, um, that you guys supporting the channel. Real quick. All right, guys, thank you for all, to my channel members and my Patreons. You know, another thing that I wanted to mention briefly as well, because some people do need that AC unit. And, and nowadays, they are definitely getting a lot more efficient. They're getting a lot more user-friendly, including Bluetooth. The ones, you know, the, the Dometic, the Nomadic, the um, EcoFlow, they're all Bluetooth on an app so that you can know exactly how long, can, if I keep it set at this temperature, how long will my battery last? Will it last if I go to bed and sleep eight hours? Is it going to completely drain my battery in the middle of the night? You can see that. You can see that from the app you know exactly how much it's going to use the the zero um the zero breeze has it on the front it's got the temperature on the front believe it's got how many hours it'll run at um that one i might be um uh mistaken on but again very very pet friendly um, and even if it's just like the zero breeze, which seems to be the most basic, actually, this is the most basic, but if you've got a pet and this thing is a moisture air, I get it. But if you've got a pet and it's miserable hot outside and you're miserable, your dog is, I mean, your dog's probably miserable. Your cat's probably miserable. These run it at, on high at eight Watts, at least get this, get it blowing on them. So, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yes, I need some for the Pro Master. Hello, everyone. I have a channel and documented my entire van build for others to learn from. That is awesome. Van Life Biker. Um, looks like I need to do a how-to for my blackout curtains. Absolutely. Blackout curtains, honestly. That's what I have in my van. Well, actually, I have... Um, I don't have blackout curtains. Um, Julie had the blackout curtains. I have, I made mine out of the material, that, but it's got the double-sided. They're very thick. Um, and they really, really keep a lot of that heat in that front cab. Don't cool down a space that you don't have to. Um, do these apps give you a warning if your power is getting low? You know what? Honestly, I bet they do, but it, the number's right on there. Now, if your phone is sitting next to you on the nightstand, is it going to alert? You may have a setting, like say you've got, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to mess it up. Who am I thinking of? Uh, Battleborn. It's not, it's, um, say you've got you know, a setup, you could probably send it to your app when your battery gets at a certain level. Um, also on that app, it tells you it can run nine hours. If you don't have, if, if, if you know the sun's not going to be up in nine hours, you know, you're not going to be driving in nine hours, turn it down two degrees, turn it down three degrees because it's, you're still a lot cooler than what it is outside and throughout the night you know it's getting cooler the sun's not beating down on the van most people i think that are like that would run an ac for that many hours at a time have either a medical necessity or they can't sleep when they're hot so you'll know exactly how many hours that your system will tolerate 
what is your next build? It is a Pro Master, and it's coming um, in September. Um, oops. The heat and living so close to... Um, <laughs> I brought it. Keeps you working. I, I can tell you, um, I didn't have any problems. My rig was hot. I'm not going to lie to you. Everybody that has been following me for a long time, there was almost every day in July and probably August that I woke up and it was like 93, 95 hot in my van. And I never had any problems with my toilet. If, um, uh, if there's a way to divert power for solar from solar or generator to vans, AC. You can so so if your system's charging from solar, you can also charge it from a generator at the same time. And your system's only going to charge to its max capacity. Once it gets to its max capacity, you're you'll get like my 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 inverter that I use will give me a low voltage because it's it's not pulling any power. I just turn it down uh, or turn it off. Um, <laughs> sprinters rule. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have the slide up and down curtains, but I put blackout curtains inward on them. It cuts down sun heat and keeps. Yep. Absolutely. All those little tricks, all those little tricks will definitely, definitely, definitely help. Going to sleep now. Good night, everyone. Tuesday. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. And Dam West is uh, out there at Carlisle. That's where I like to go. So when you're at Dam West, I'll come see you. Um, whichever comes first. Yep. Everybody saying goodnight to Patty. We've got about three minutes left on here. I appreciate everybody that's been here. I, I, I know I tried to catch as many questions as I could, as many comments about the AC that I could. I hope I caught um, your question. If I didn't answer a question that you had, please, once the live stream is over, Put it in the comments. I answer every single one of my comments. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. I respond as, as long as it's a recognizable, like, you know, it doesn't look like somebody's trying to send me a, a video or something. I will watch it. I will look at your message. So, oh, uh, that's what I want to see. I mean, the van stock AC for the cabin when driving. Your solar, I, I'm so sorry, Jen. I hope I'm not messing this one up too. Your solar will charge your unit that's running your AC while you're driving. So, so if you have, if you have, you know, again, 600 amp hours worth of batteries, you've got your AC working, or your AC driving, you can charge your 600 amp hours off of your alternator. Um, off the battery, a DC to DC charger, you can charge off of solar all at the same time, all at the same time. Um, we have a great idea, Ambor RV. Yep. Um, I'm doing as much research in Val Life and apps. It's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot of information. Um, and it's a lot of opinions. Everybody's need in van life is different. Can one of my moderators drop if there's a thumbnail for um, uh, Danny Griswold Family Vacation, Griswold Family Vacation, and we will raid them if they've got a uh, if they've got a thumbnail up. Can somebody post that link and we'll go raid them? But you have to remember again is everybody's needs are different. Whether it's a medical need, whether you just don't like being hot, um, everybody's van setup, their battery capacity, and their budget is different. 
So um, you do your research, do, do a, a ton more research than you think you ever could do before you make the purchase. I have 600 watts of solar on a midsize sprinter with a rooftop AC and a max air fan. How much battery do you have? How many amp hours of battery do you have? Um, all right, guys, it's 10 o'clock. Everybody, thank you for being here. Um, I'm not sure if somebody dropped Griswold's link. Um, if somebody can drop that, we'll go raid um, Griswold's family vacation. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. The last video before the tour will be up Sunday. I appreciate everybody that's been following along on this build. And I've got several projects this month. And then we're going to start another build in September. Take care, guys. Stay cool.